compared to like software engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, environmental engineers didn't really make that much compared to their other engineer counterparts. So for example, like a software engineer at Google can easily make like 130000 a year. Professional civil engineers can make like 87000 Mechanical engineers can make like 88000 so roughly around like the same amount. And surprisingly, chemical engineers can make about like 100000 a year. So all these engineers, they're making over like 80000 a year, but let's look at environmental engineers. They make around like 67000 So if you read the title, you're probably thinking like, how can that be possible? How can environmental engineers be the wealthiest out of all of them. They're making like less than half of a software engineer or making like 20,000 less than like a mechanical engineer. So really it all comes down to like lifestyle and mindset. Yes, you can be making like six figures at Google, but if you spend all that trying to look rich or like trying to buy items or to impress others, you don't really have that much. Yes, you're making about 100,000 a year, but all that stuff, it may equivalent to like 100,000 a year. But you know, over time, those things might devalue, they might depreciate, and you'll just end up with a lot of stuff that used to be 100000 but now it could be like less than that. And you just end up with having stuff that doesn't really make you happy. What I'm trying to say here is that yes, you could be making a lot, but if you end up buying a lot of stuff that ends up being junk, you don't really have a lot. All you really have is like stuff. You don't have like the flexibility and technically the money because you spent all that money for stuff. You can't technically trade in like that new watch to pay your electricity bill. You have to convert that watch to money pay that electricity bill. You are tied down to the amount of stuff that you have. That's what I mean by you don't really have flexibility. Those items are like a burden to you. They're just weighing you down. So here's why I think that environmental engineers, even though they don't make that much, we have a lot more wealth compared to the other engineers. First off, let's distinguish between the two. So being rich and being wealthy, to me they're two different things. Being wealthy means that you have time and flexibility and happiness and freedom to do whatever you want compared to being like rich. Being wealthy is not tied down to how much money you make, but rather how much time you have in yourself to do whatever you want, whenever you want, so you don't really have to spend your time working for money. It's how much time you don't have to spend working at a job to make money to just like, you know, live your life. That's what wealth is, having time to do what you want. While being rich, for example, is just having the money in order to like purchase things. And I know the saying that time is money, but to me that's not entirely true. Time can be used to generate more money but money cannot be used to generate more time for the most part. You can't spend like a hundred million dollars and get like an extra hundred years for your life. But how I see it is that sometimes people trade in their time for, you know, $20 an hour. That's like the conversion rate. But you can't trade in $20 for an extra one hour of your life. Especially if you're like on your deathbed, for example. I know it's like a really extreme example, but that's how it is. All right, so here's why I think we're like the wealthiest. One is that typically, environmental engineers, we're like minimalists. So being a minimalist, you make strategic purchases. You know, every item that we purchase has to have a purpose for our life. We only buy things that we need, okay? Not what we want, what we need. Or it could be things that make us happy or just like, that just focus more. We don't need like the latest technology. We only buy things that is still functional, still works. We don't need to impress anyone. We just buy what we need and let it run the course of its life. Once we get it and we're happy with what we have, that's really all we need. We are not tied down to our stuff. We just have one item that we can use indefinitely or for as long as it can function, and that's really all we need. We just need one item of one thing that we need. Next is that we might grow our own food. So because we're like so focused on the environment and like we love the environment and we try to like dedicate our entire lives to preserving it, and of course you have to know something about it. You want to be like sustainable. So the best way to be sustainable is to have like a homegrown garden, for example. I know it's not much, we're not like trying to grow an entire farm here, but we do save a few bucks here and there by growing our own tomatoes, for example, or lettuce. You don't have to go to the grocery store, meaning we don't have to like drive our car to the grocery store. You don't have to pay for the tomatoes. Overall, I know it's like we're penny pinching here, but like it does add up. So going hand in hand with like growing our own food, and that it's sustainable. Because we're sustainable, we don't really like to like waste things. So again, going back to like penny pinching here, we, we turn off the lights when we don't use it. We turn off the sink and the water when we don't use it. That could just mean that we don't have like a high electricity bill or like a high water bill. I know it sounds like so petty here, but we are just saving the environment. We're not wasting, we're not generating waste because of our lifestyle. And really like, why do we need to turn on the light if no one's gonna use it? Why do we need to turn on the water if no one's going to use it? All these things, I know they're, again, really, really small. We're just saving a few bucks here and there. 
at the end of the month, at the end of the year, at the end of a decade, it does add up. So not only are we being sustainable and like friendly to the environment because we're not generating waste, we're just saving some money here and there because we don't need to use it. And lastly, and hope that this is for all engineers out there, or at least for everyone out there, is that we see things in long term. So for example, if we're going to design some structures, we have to see how long it will last. You want to make sure that it lasts for as long as possible for the cheapest amount. In terms of like being a minimalist too, you want to make sure that when we purchase something, we want to make sure that our money is used very strategically for the best price and for as long as possible. So instead of having like an item last for like 10 years, you want it to last 50 years. For the same amount, you know, we just reduce our price five times because we purchased something that would last five times as long. Overall, we want to get the most out of our money, right? We want to make sure that our money is wisely spent, not just used frivolously to impress others or it's just a general waste. Overall, we have like very focused mindsets and that's how we just might end up being wealthier than others. It's because we have like a plan that we stick to. As long as we have like a good plan, good purchase, and like a very strategic mindset, then yeah, that's why we just end up being wealthier than all the other engineers, no matter how much they make. I know I feel like I'm trying to compare and compete with other engineers here, but that's not really the case. I just wanted to point out that people's lifestyle, people's mindset, like they're inefficient. But I'm not saying this to like downgrade them. I'm saying this so I can point it out to them that they can change their ways. I want them and I want all of us to be you know, mindful of our purchases. I want all of us to have like wealth and riches at the same time. But you don't know that until someone tells you really, no matter how rude it is. But that being said though, of course there are other engineers out there who are chemical or mechanical engineers who have the same mindset as me. We have the same goal. Yes, we might be comparing each other's salary, but we're not enemies, okay? All right, so with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you did learn something. Maybe I pointed out some flaws. Maybe I taught you something new or like changed your perspective on a few things. Hopefully you can implement this into your life too. That way you can also acquire the same thing that we're all looking for, which is just like wealth and like more time to do whatever you want. All right, that's all. Goodbye.